Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be finishing up our short video series on the lovely DC-3 here with a quick little instrument landing approach. Now this aircraft is uh, <laughs> not recommended for these kind of approaches, but it doesn't mean you can't do them, it just means they're a little bit trickier than usual. Let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, um, we're going to have to go get ourselves out of climb mode and get ourselves kind of ready for putting the darn thing down on the ground mode. Relatively straightforward process. Unfortunately, we have pretty much everything ready for us already. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go through some quick little checks. We're going to make sure boost pumps are set on, those switches are good, we've got our position lights on, we've got a landing light on. That's all set, uh, prop de ice, uh, carburetor heat is required, I'm not going to worry about too much of those options at all. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set us up for an ILS approach into PVD, which is that lovely little runway down there. So to do that, I'm going to float my head up here, and you're going to see that we have some frequencies right up here. Taking a look at the approach plate, uh, we're looking for a frequency of 109.30, I'm going to dial that in, I'm going to push in on that button, and that's of course uh, going to make uh, magic start to happen. Now, you see this little guy right here? This is our device for identifying if we're on glide slope or if we're off course. So in this case, you're going to notice that we're a little low, and you're also probably going to notice that we're a little off to the left of the course we need to be, which if I stick my hand out the window real fast, you can see that makes perfect sense. Now, most of you are like, well, what about this guy right here? We'll just tell you, yeah. So this needle now tells you the direction to the ILS. This needle will tell you if you were left or right of it, and this one tells you what your particular glide slope is. Now, uh, some people, of course, are saying they're going, saying, um, I can't see that from here. Um, am I supposed to like fly like this or something like that? Uh, the answer is, yeah, you're, you're supposed to fly like that. <laughs> so how much you can do about it. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. One thing you can do if you want to have a little bit of fun, by the way, is you can turn on the audio signal for the markers. So as we approach the different parts of the ILS approach, it will go ahead and kind of get itself ready. So now you're probably sitting here going, uh, what are we going to use as far as approach speed on the DC-3? Well, there's a lot a lot of factors that are going to kind of have that, depending on what's kind of a thing like that. Again, our approach speed, uh, it's going to be probably between 80 and 100 miles per hour, which isn't like incredibly fast there. Uh, 90 knots is uh, kind of like the sweet spot for this aircraft, but obviously as we get heavier, it's closer to 100. As we get lighter, it's going to be closer to, um, well, like I said, about 80 knots. All right, so let's go ahead and unpause here. Now, there is no automatic system on here for um, any sort of instrument approach here. All the instrument approaches are going to be completely by hand here. So the idea here is, um, I guess you could I guess you could kind of fly like this. <laughs> oh, man, they just did not think about ergonomics when they put that needle down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it as a partial visual, partial ILS approach here. And like I was mentioning before, I do have external instruments, which makes this a little bit easier. So looking at the window right now, I can see that I'm nice and on course. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign myself up real quickly. Now we're just starting to come on glide slope at this particular point here, which is uh, pretty good for us. We're still in cruise mode. Uh, cow flaps are looking uh, pretty solid. Like I said, uh, nothing too, too excessive. And we're just about to bump into our first position here, which is going to allow us to start our descent down onto the ground here. So I'm looking pretty pretty good yeah we got to start a descent all right here we go so to descend this thing uh, we want to kind of reduce power in stages uh, what i like to do is uh, reduce the power down to uh, 20 inches which seems to be a pretty safe rp uh, pretty safe manifold pressure for the purposes of most of our approach here uh, when you kick that in of course uh, this thing is not going to get in a hurry to go ahead and start slowing down uh, that's just not the nature of it but we are able to pick up a quick little approach here go ahead and start reducing power a little bit more uh, we're plenty close enough to the runway there all right that's about 15 inches now what I like to do is I like to smoothly go ahead and increase the RPM as well. At this point, now you don't need to use maximum RPM. Usually for an approach like this, uh, going up to about 2,500 RPM is fine. You need to go around, of course, uh, grab both handles simultaneously and just jam them for it. So that's going to get us getting a little bit closer here. Line ourselves up just a little more. Pull that nose up. And like I said, we're kind of drifting. It's uh, fantastically challenging to try to look at that little needle down there. But that's what it's for. Like I said, get in the habit of uh, moving your seat around good. Okay, getting a little high again. All right, a little bit slower. Check my airspeed real quick. We got about 140 miles an hour. We got to get a lot slower than that. There we are. Got to go ahead and pull the throttle back for just a second here. Bleed off some more speed. There we go. You're coming down. Yeah, we're a little off to the, we're a little high, and we're also a little off to the right, which confirms. Got to get below our flap speed. Our flap speed here is 112 miles an hour. You can see I actually have to pull the nose up to get slow enough to be able to put the flaps down. Isn't that crazy. All right, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and bring our flaps to the half position. 
again, the way this flap handle works is you uh, kind of hold it in the position you want it to be to get to the position you want to be. There we go. Now we're starting to show a little bit better here. So 90 knots or so, uh, we're pushing, eh, that's going to be about 100 miles an hour or so for us. We don't want to get too slow here. Take a look at our approach angle here. Uh, we come down to the left. That looks pretty good. Just a little more power. We're pretty lightweight, so... This is so awkward. <laughs> Try this in VR, by the way. It's much simpler. All right, looking pretty good. Gonna go ahead and bring down our next notch. Looking pretty solid. I feel like we're low, but I know we're not. All right, we are in the pipe. Take a look down below. Yeah, just a tiny bit high, but everything else is good. Now the goal here is basically peg it at 90. Now because we are conventional landing gear aircraft, though, we have two different options at our disposal as far as uh, what method we want to set down at. We can do a two-wheel landing or we can do a kind of a three-wheel landing, a three-point landing as it's uh, commonly called. Now this particular aircraft, it doesn't really like two-wheel landing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to two-wheel land it intentionally to kind of show you why it does not care much for two-wheel landings. <laughs> and then we'll transition, of course, into a three-wheel landing. So with the two-wheel landing, basically what you're going to do is you're going to get the landing gear very, very, very close to the ground. And you're going to play keep away until uh, basically the ground set down. And as soon as you get the nose down on the ground, what you're actually going to do is, by the way, I am not having a glide slope issue. That is MSFS for you. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to get close enough to the ground. As soon as you touch the ground, you actually got to stick the nose forward so that it stays on the ground. Otherwise, you tend to just have a nice gentle bounce here. All right. There's our target down on the ground. Like I said, the instrumentation is not well placed in this particular aircraft. And what we're going to do is basically going to fly it flat. And, uh, right now, we're just about flat. I know it looks like we're tipped down just a little bit. Keep ourselves pretty close. We're not really going to have a big reduction in power here. Just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. And we're just going to ease onto the ground with two wheels. There they are. And we're just going to go ahead and push the nose forward. There we go. And we'll go ahead and uh, fight this just a little bit. We don't want to go riding on the brakes too much here. There we go. I transition to bring that tail wheel down. And notice we're in the air again. See? See? Going around. So what I wanted to demonstrate there is the way this one is modeled is uh, when you go in a situation where um, you try to force that thing onto the ground with the two wheels, the moment you pull the nose back again, you're going to find yourself right back in the air uh, where you were just a few seconds ago. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pause, and I guess I'll line back up for that. There we go. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to do a full three-wheel landing. Now, I'm not having a real GC3. I can't speak if it uh, tends to do that with the two-wheelers. But um, yeah, we got a lot of air there. So now what we have to do is we have to get the plane so that it touches all three points at the same time. Now, this is tricky for us because when you look at the aircraft from the side, you'll notice that the correct angle to do that is going to be here, which is almost 11 degrees. So in order to get that safe landing without that really, really nasty bump that tends to come immediately afterward, we're basically going to have to put the plane just a little bit over the ground and with the throttle basically manipulate it so that we can get ourselves over that position at that attitude, cut the throttle and basically wait for the clunk. <laughs> that follows immediately afterwards. So right now we're at about a five degree nose down in case you're curious about angles here. I'm just gonna kind of bring us, there's our approach speed of about 90 knots, which is a pretty good for us. We're relatively lightweight. I've got my RPM all set, my landing gear in the correct position, my flaps are in the correct position. Everything is uh, completely ready to go as far as uh, this approach goes. Looking pretty good again. I'm gonna apply just a little bit of power. Like I can feel like I'm getting a little sinky here. It's about 500 feet per minute good we're gonna do it old school style again this is flat we don't want to land like this we want to land nose up so i'm going to transition by pulling the throttle back and now i'm going to lift the nose of the aircraft up now what's going to happen is you're going to have a bunch of things happen at once your nose is going to come up but you're not going to change an altitude above the runway so if you see the runway right now do you see how it seems to be about the same altitude but my nose keeps getting higher what you want to do is you want to transition so you're about at nine or ten degrees which is about this position what's going to happen is the aircraft is going to get very sinky and then it's going to settle down on its three tires 
see the difference? <laughs> so I'm holding the control all the way back to my chest here. I'm going to go ahead and hold on the brakes gently. You do not want to stand on the brakes. You will do a face plan uh, very much like we do in the Orion. And we're just going to ease and just come to a complete stop here, which uh, isn't too, too bad. And now we're clear of the runway. At this point, you want to go ahead and disengage your tail wheel lock. And uh, now you're ready to go. Now, some of you are probably going, well, that was pretty impressive. Oh, by the way, don't forget to do this as well. There we go. Uh, some of you are probably saying, well, I can land the thing on the numbers. It's like, you can. And the key to landing the thing in the numbers is uh, coming in extremely slowly. Uh, of course, uh, like I said, we don't want to come in too darn slowly because uh, that could be pretty damn dangerous, especially if you have a bunch of passengers on board that aren't a big fan of it. So as we saw in this aircraft, um, this is this is quirky. Uh, it's a very, very popular aircraft. Um, there's still several of them flying today to give you an idea of how well venerable they are. The angle on this thing, like I said, we're about at a 12 degree nose up right now, is different so it really really you have to kind of get used to that and a lot of it is just finding a good spot to put your head when you're actually playing the game itself securing the aircraft uh, relatively straightforward i'm gonna go ahead and do one of those sort of things i uh, normally what we do is we go ahead and rev up the engines a little bit and then of course we can come in here and i uh, do one of those and just uh, cut the fuel out and i uh, kind of clean any carbon or anything like that and there it goes sweet now the two engines have come to a complete stop beautiful I can change the RPM of them so quickly. You can't do that in the real one. And other than that, once that's set, we just work our way backwards from where we started, shut everything off, and enjoy. 